Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie. And um, how are you all? I hope you're all good. So, in today's video, I'm going to be looking at, you know, I'm doing this Back to Basics uh, series of videos about the Nicola Bully case. We're near, closer and closer to the inquest all the time. We're now on the 4th of June. The inquest is on the 26th of June. Still, uh, well, four weeks, is it away? It's still four weeks away. Four weeks tomorrow. But anyway, it's closer than it was. Um, and I've been looking at different interviews. I've done quite a lot. I've looked quite a lot at the Emma interviews. I've still got uh, a few Emma interviews to go through because she did so many, of course, before uh, they decided that the press should leave them alone now. Um, there were so many interviews. And what I'm going to look at in today's interview is where it all started with Paul. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this interview uh, at some point, but it might be a while since you've seen it. The other thing I'm going to is the interview on the riverbank where he smiles. And that's, I think, where nearly everyone started to think this doesn't feel right rightly or wrongly that's where it all started you know for me certainly and for uh, the rest of you when i see your comments etc um that seems to be you know it just didn't feel right did it that first interview and that's where people started to question um if you like the narrative and then the second thing for me was uh, the voice note that Paul sent to Sky News, you know, the WhatsApp voice message that he sent to Sky News very shortly after that interview, uh, it must have been at night because the reporter obviously didn't answer the phone um, because otherwise Paul wouldn't have left a voice note. So bearing in mind that these, these interviews, all the interviews that Emma made, um, these two interviews that Paul made, and then, of course, the big interview that he made with Dan Walker, which I'll be looking at uh, in another video, they were done voluntarily. Um, they were done, you know, that was when they wanted to speak to the press. Nicola's parents and sister, as far as I know, only spoke to the press once that first interview. Uh, again, in the Emma seemed to be behind because it was at Marsh Farm Hall or wherever it's called um but paul and emma went on to do quite a few interviews before they decided when nicola was found it was leave us alone now it was uh, it really struck me that the difference and and the sort of um the way the tone of the way that uh, message uh, that uh, family statement the way it was compiled that tone against the media when up to then, as is seen by the interviews that they both did, um, they'd courted the media, you know, and I, sometimes I get a bad feeling about this whole thing because I think, as, was it deliberate putting the inquest so late? Uh, because as, you know, life goes on, people have other things to talk about, other things going on, they forget things from the beginning. That's why I'm doing this back to basics because... I think it's important to remember why people felt the way they did, you know, in the beginning. There was a reason for it. it was We didn't all just think, oh, that guy has murdered his wife or what, and uh, for no reason. There's a reason why all the, you know, all the mystery and, and not only that, the, the things that we're going to look at today, uh, look at today, things that people thought, oh, just doesn't feel right. And that's why people started feeling suspicious of something and I keep on saying I don't know if any foul play was done to Nicola I don't know but I, everything feels wrong I feel that there's something you know this relationship between Emma and Paul where she just takes over everything you know so there's something there I don't know what it is we'll hopefully when it comes to the inquest we'll get more information that is only time can tell that there is absolutely nothing we can do in the meantime, really, except, you know, have our own thoughts and opinions. Um, OK, so before I start, I'm just going to do my housekeeping, basically, just to let you know that um, 
I also teach Spanish. If you're interested in learning Spanish, thank you so much. Quite a lot of you, I think, have bought my books on learning Spanish. Uh, the break, uh, break, break the language. This is the time to fast forward. If you've seen it all before, break the language barrier. Level one to five. Level one is for beginners. So if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning Spanish, this is the book for you. It's got the answers in the back. The explanations are in English, and uh, there's backup video tubes on my other video uh, on my other YouTube channel, which is all about learning Spanish and English for people who need to learn English. Uh, the other thing is my book, Confessions of a Spanish Teacher, which just tells my story and how I came to be a Spanish teacher in Spain. Experiences that I've had in my life, which is why I'm interested in these kind of cases, etc. Uh, other things, uh, the main way you can help my channel, support my channel, <clears throat> and I appreciate it so much, is just to subscribe, like the video, and maybe share the video if you think somebody would be interested in it. Other ways you can help, if you want to go that little bit further, you can become an, uh, a member for one euro ninety nine a month, which is cancellable anytime where you get some extra news and uh, content, photos, etc. Or you can uh, send supers, super chats, super thanks, super stickers. Thank you so much to everyone who's done that for me. And, or you can buy me a coffee and the link is in the description at coffee.com. Okay, so that's the housekeeping out of the way. And you'll all know now, or ones that have, if you watch my last video, uh, next Monday, in fact, I think it is. I am, not tomorrow, but uh, a week tomorrow, I am going on location. I am going to the scene of a very famous crime. And uh, we'll be doing some videos from there. Hope, I'm hoping to do some live streams. I don't know what the internet will be like there and that, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully some live, live streams, but if nothing else, I'll be taking videos to upload once I get back. And once I let you know where I am, you'll be able to ask any questions. I'll be letting my members know. I think on Saturday, I'll be letting the members know where I'm going. And then on Monday, when I actually get there, I'll be letting everybody know where I am. Okay, so let's have a look at these uh, videos with Paul. You know, um, it, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because, yes, we, we don't have a point of reference with Paul or Emma because we didn't know them from before. So we don't know if this behaviour is strange or not strange or etc. One thing that I did notice when I was looking for this first video, the video that Paul did by the riverbank, I noticed on the actual Sky News video, the bit where Paul laughs at the end, it wasn't it wasn't there. It, it was like it had been shortened, which was quite interesting. And I thought, gosh. But anyway, I did find it. So we're going to look. Let's have a look at the video. And then uh, I might stop it in between and comment. But... We'll just have a look. Cause the thing is, yeah, you may have seen this right at the beginning, but you may have forgotten about it. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it was the woolly hat, wasn't it, as well? It was like um, this conjecture about whether... Um, you know, he had a bruise over his eye because even when he does the interview with uh, Dan Walker, it does look, this was a week on as well. This is the first time that we even saw Paul. Um, before that, he hadn't made any appeals. Um, there's been, there was no reconstruction done. Um, it was only now, a week later, that he, he popped up uh, for an interview. So let's see, let's see what he's got to um, I, can't, I don't want to really elaborate on that. I just oh, beginning. In my beginning, but obviously it too. Just open to goodness. Uh, Uh, 
anything comes out from the interview. Okay. Just staying as strong as I can for them. So he says, I don't have anything to say, only apart from what the family said yesterday. Now, notice it's funny he says the family there, but later on there's quite a lot of discussion about the fam, you know, like the police statement. It's the family, the family. And we don't know who he means by the family. Do, do you know, he's there separated himself from the family. We've got, I've got nothing else to say except what the family said yesterday. But then later on, um, when the police make the statement or these things come out and they refer to the family, we don't know who they mean by the family. Do they mean all of them? Emma refers to herself as the family as well. We as a family. You know, so who is the family? Um, it's, it's quite strange. I, I, think it, I do think it's strange that we never see uh, Paul with the, the family, if you like. You know, it's always very separate, isn't it? And we never hear um, from his family either. So there's, you know, they... Uh, um, it's always Paul and Emma, Emma and Paul, Paul and Emma. And then the one interview that we saw with Dot and Ernie and Louise, but we've never seen them all together and making an appeal. Uh, and, and Paul has never really made an appeal, like actually looked at the camera and said, come on, Nikki, please come home. You know, I've mentioned this many times in my videos. That to me is the first thing that you do. You know, you're... You, if you don't know what's happened to her and she's disappeared you and you know that she's got vulnerabilities because, of course, he knew <clears throat> that she did have the vulnerabilities <clears throat> that we didn't find out till later, surely you would appeal directly to the camera. You would think that she'd run off somewhere. Your first thought would be maybe she'd run off somewhere. I'm scared that if I put any focus into anything else yeah i think that's key that he says i've got to be very careful i've got to be very careful um you know and i understand what he's saying is he's probably thinking he's got to be strong you know for the girls or or whatever but it's i've got to be very careful yeah and this not he never talks about nikki as if she is alive Just hoping to goodness that anything comes out from the interview. I'm hoping to goodness that anything comes out, but he's shaking his head like that. Yesterday, no matter how tiny. Uh, just say a, a massive thank you to the community for uh, doing the, it seems like we're no further on. It just just seems. I think there he look. You know, maybe he's just a person who who does laugh nervously at things because he looked there like he was going to smile. We look at his face there; it just looks amused almost. Uh, you know, I, I know you can't know what someone's thinking inside their head, but to me i think as i've said many times it's all in the eyes you look in the eyes what are the eyes telling you there what do you think you tell me what you think maybe i'm wrong it just seems absolutely impossible just i mean you, you left like a dream that's me because you said it is more like a nightmare isn't it really than a dream but anyway um Maybe that's just uh, the... I always try and give him the benefit of the doubt. All of them a benefit of the doubt because you've got to look at things from the other, you know, from the other side and think it's always possible. But to me, again, I've probably said before, I know I've said before, it's not uh, like that one thing that we'll see in a minute with him smiling or the thing of the Paul and Emma all the time and the things that Emma said, it's not any of those things individually. It's all those things put together. Lots of little things you put together become a big thing, don't they? That's sort of trying to make sense of the, of the senses, aren't you? It's just such a mystery. Yeah, it it is. There's just no, every, every single scenario... Oh. 
Yeah, that's the bit where he, he nearly says evidence, doesn't he? He says there's just no ev every single scenario. He was definitely going to say evidence there. And that in itself maybe is not, but why did he change it? Why did he feel that he had to change what he was going to say? All we're doing is sitting there going round and round and round, going through every scenario, and then go back to the, f the first scenario again and do the whole th thing again. And then and it, it's just all day long. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. There's a smile there. See, he's smiling there. You know, is it a nervous smile? I don't know. It's the eyes, the eyes. You coping, it must be so difficult. Like you say, your focus is, is on the girls, and it, and it has to be. But yeah. it, it must be so difficult. I don't know how I'm coping. I, I, can't, I, I don't even want to actually think about that. Just focus, just like I say. It's just about the girls, that's it. And, yeah, I think the other thing that we're, I'm remembering now were, that would seem strange about this interview, never mentions Nikki's name. Never, ever mentions her name. It's all about the girls. It's all about the girls. Um, um, I, can't, I don't want to really elaborate on that. I just... Yeah, he doesn't want to elaborate on it because he doesn't want to slip up. Uh, I don't know. It makes me wonder, think about how did this interview come about? Was it, had it been planned? Is that why was it, or was it just there and the Sky News were there and they went over to him and said, do you want to do an interview? Normally in these sort of cases, the police get involved in the sense they give the permission. Any, uh, I've watched a lot of true crime and when the police, uh, normally the press will go to the police and say we'd like to interview them or the police themselves will organize the press interview um for the appeal like they did with holly and jessica well uh, holly wells and jessica when they disappeared or you know it, it, the police have an involvement in it normally the police had no involvement in any of these interviews they the police did their press conference a couple of them, didn't they? But they never did a press conference with the family. Um, they didn't want to take part in the uh, the missing, uh, the vanished um, Dan Walker interview. They never, the police never got involved with any of these um, family statements. Which, again, you know, just going literally on, you know, I might not be a policeman, but I've seen over the you know god knows how many cases that i've watched and looked into and that is always what happens normally the police get involved with some sort of appeal for someone to come back you know years ago it might have been crime on crime watch now it's like they get together with i don't think we have an equivalent of crime watch now do that do we but they normally get together and do um a press conference with the family and they support the family of course don't they so yeah it's so strange that um he's been allowed to go rogue if you like a bit like this uh, a bit you know the police normally protect the people involved to see the, the public response hundreds of people trying to help it's amazing it's uh, it is take is you know that level of support is out of this world um it gives us a, a great amount of comfort knowing that there that's going on we don't have anything else do we well there's hope there's, yeah. so that was it that was it that was the moment when everyone thought what because he he he, he says we don't have anything else do we laughed and and that i think that was for most of us look i mean is that just um total nervous laugh but you see that laugh has reached his eyes you know sometimes when people smile it doesn't reach their eyes but it has reached his eyes but let's see it again there's hope there's yeah we're never ever going to lose the hope of course we're not. yeah when the reporter says about the hope he, he got oh yeah we're never going to lose the hope of course we're not and i think he gets a little bit tetchy there because he realizes he should have said hope and in nearly every interview from then on 
and Emma's interviews to hope always comes into it right up to the very last statement uh, when poor Nicola's body had been identified the, the very last thing they say in that statement or he says or Emma says or whoever wrote the statement was um, for those who are going through the same thing something on the lines of uh, for those who are going through the same thing keep hope alive you know I just noticed it then became a theme all the way through uh, but like but right now it is as though she has vanished into thin air like yeah just it in, just insane yeah um better get that off before we get i'll probably i'll probably get done for uh uh what do you call it for copyright <laughs> it's just, uh, sometimes there's just no way of avoiding it but never mind um so yeah so that was that first interview that's what made everyone feel a little bit uneasy let's say now don't know if you noticed when he compressed his lips as well like you compress your lips and you don't want to say something uh that's something that chris watts did a lot and i was the other day i was watching you know the uh philip schofield i can't even go into him uh, i was watching his interview and he did the same thing it's it's definitely a hmm, what am i supposed to be saying here sort of type thing when they compress their lips together it's like be careful think about it so that was that first interview i think that's who you know that's why we all started becoming suspicious in the end and then what struck me then is because you know i think in the right in the very beginning uh, it's a, it was a story wasn't it that was on in the background in the news if like me you watch the news a lot and it was being mentioned but there wasn't there was this to me it was just a general feeling that um well i, I felt like something had happened to the poor lady but i didn't think um didn't think she deleted herself or of anything to do with family then i just i thought you know somebody had done something to her you know while she was walking a dog hid in the trees or whatever and then of course as time went on and all these sort of strange uh things and the interviews etc that's when you start thinking oh hang on a minute this isn't like anything like what i thought it was in the beginning and one of the next thing that made me feel like that was the voice notes sky news because i thought it was an odd thing to do you know to to phone up sky news and to leave a message you know why did he so it was obviously late at night why did he feel that he had to phone late at night and then if they didn't answer why leave a message of you know a voice message why not um send a message you know why not send a message or what was the purpose of this anyway let's listen to it as i say i, I don't know what the purpose of it was Right, now he's definitely reading off a script for a start, definitely, just the way he's, re he's reading that. So I, my feeling is that Emma's prepared that for him to, he's got Emma all over it, hasn't it? And then, um, yeah, what was that last thing he said? He said, for the girls, but also for me. You know, uh, let me just see. Also, God, I mean, that is so robotic the way he's reading that, so obviously from a script. What was the purpose? of this voice note I, I, I you know these are just what another of the mystifying things i 
I can't put those girls to bed again tonight. I can't put those girls to bed tonight with no answers. Well, it, you, you know, you've got to, you're not going to get an answer now within sort of 10 minutes of that uh, voice note. So that's oh, a strange thing saying, you know, who says the strange things? Emma. Emma wrote that. He read it out. But it was some sort of damage limitation. But it backfired. The thing with Emma is uh, she thinks she's so clever, doesn't it? You know, like, and she's just not because all the things, whether, whether you think there was any foul play or not, she's like, this is what she thinks uh, they should do, like setting up the first GoFundMe for 100000 Pounds. Why did they do that? Why did you think that would be acceptable? You know, um, what? Because Nikki hadn't. You couldn't even say it was for the funeral or it, it was for uh, the girl's future, etc. Because she, she, no, they didn't know what had happened to her yet. So she could have just walked in the next day. You know, just or oh, just needed to get away for a few days. She didn't. So why was that set up? It was like almost, it's too quick, all that. Um, you know, just straight away you felt like they knew she wasn't coming back, didn't you? Um, let's just listen to that one more time. Anyway, uh, anyway, let's listen to I just realised I wasn't sharing the screen there. I think you could probably hear him, but now I, 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 let's do it again. With, I'm actually sharing the screen. I always forget that I've got to put it back to sharing the screen. I think it would just go to what I'm looking at, but of course it doesn't. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Is it? Uh, Let me just see if that's going to work. Why is it not happening now? I urge them, please, to get in touch with the police, help us provide the answers that we all so badly need. We have to find her safe and well. I can't put no answers, it's, yeah, thank you. Right, sorry, so one more time because um, I did uh, mess it up again. <laughs> 10 days now since Nicola went missing. I have two little girls who miss their mummy desperately. We need her back. It's been such a tough time for the girls especially, but also for me, all of Nikki's family and friends, as well as the wider community. I want to thank them for their love and support. We're also really grateful to Peter and his team from SGI for coming up and helping support the work of Lancashire Police as they continue their investigation. Their support is amazing. If anyone has any information which could help find Nikki, I urge them please to get in touch with the police Help us provide the answers that we all so badly need. We have to find her safe and well. I can't put those girls to bed again tonight with no answers. It's, yeah. Thank you. So there you go. 
her that was the voice note i hope you heard it okay what do you think what do you think anyway we're just going back over all these things as i say leading up to the inquest uh, we're at a point where we can't do anything more there's no other information coming out or, or certainly hasn't been feel like every day you're expecting something to some news to come out or and it's just not happening so you know be interesting to see what happens when the day of the inquest actually arrives will it be adjourned could be adjourned immediately could come immediately up with a verdict that we're not happy with or a verdict you know the best verdict we can really hope for if we believe that you know there's something been done to nikki is an open verdict could be misadventure, it could be accidental, it could be, of course, the S word. You know, we don't know. Mr. James Aidley, maybe he knows already what his decision's going to be, or maybe he doesn't, maybe he hasn't decided yet. Maybe there's still things going on that we don't know about. So we just have to wait and see, don't we? Okay, so that's it from me, and um, I hope you found that interesting and it's reminded you of things from the beginning. As always, let me know what you think. I, I really appreciate people's comments as long as they're polite and respectful. You don't have to agree with me, um, you know. But if, if you're going to be, if, if you want to be shouting at me and aggressive, you just go in. You know, that I've only got one person who does that at the moment and they're on their last warning but i have told them that but um yeah so let me know what you think i'll see you later in the live in the live later i'm going to be talking about gary uh, ridgeway the green li green liver killer the green river killer who's the uh the, well they think the second most prolific serial killer in american history in usa history very strange guy uh, or very interesting guy whichever way you want to look at it they call him the green river killer because uh, many of his victims were found in the the green river but i think of him as the ordinary killer he's like you'll see later he's one of those people that just blend into the background uh, you know they walk amongst us and you i think if you live next door to gary ridgeway you would never suspect the kind of person he was, who's a very, very, very unassuming uh, guy that would just blend into the background. And he got away with it for nearly 20 years. And I think he could, you'll see later, he definitely should have been apprehended earlier. And it's, again, another to me, another case of the police just thinking that because he's unassuming and he's white and he's he wasn't um you know he was working class but like you know it, 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 there was nothing you know i'm sure he would have been investigated more deeply at the time because he was on the police radar for quite a long time but um i don't think he was investigated enough but anyway I'm going into tonight's live there, but I'll tell you about it all later and you can tell me what you think. But I think definitely he could have been apprehended much, much earlier if he wasn't just so ordinary, ordinary looking, unassuming, and the police just didn't register how dangerous he was. Okay, so that's me. Um, I'll see you in that video. That's the next video I'll see you in, or I'll see you in the next one. If you don't catch the live, it doesn't matter. You can watch it later on catch up um, and I will see you soon in the next, I'll see you then or if not then in the next video. So may remember to always live and love very carefully, very wisely and until I see you again, may your God go with you. Thank you.